Do you live near here? I do. I live really close. I live about five minutes. Okay, because so we're we're in. This is Hoxton, right? This is Hoxton. Yeah, I'm yeah, in yeah. Four Greens. Happy days. You don't have to travel exactly. far today. Exactly. And I'm you. still like. Ah, <laughs> I'm gonna probably just throw us back now yeah. and we'll probably do like a semi sort of trip down memory lane. Okay. And we're gonna go back to when you were 13 pretty much, okay, yeah. introducing Dion Bonfield. How have you yeah. found the music industry in terms of, how have you found it in terms of change, development, transition? Like, and not just about yourself, but in terms of like the over industry and your experience. Because you came into the industry when you were 13, yeah. so young. And that must have been quite belong for you. At, yeah. that, at, at that time. I mean, looking back at it now, I'd say it was full on. At right. the time, I didn't think it was full on because to me it was just what, what you do. Business as usual. Uh, yeah, 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 I was like, um, as much as that was such a cliche, but it was, it was um, for me, I was do, I was just doing something I genuinely loved and it did right. feel kind of like fun. I did just kind of dancing and Kind of yeah, yeah. Shows. That must have been wicked. Yeah, it was really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, exciting. Yeah, and like. Been on TV. Even that, it was very much like. Um, I was very shy, I was quite a shy kid. So yeah. for me, doing something like that was quite like daunting. But I was really lucky because I, I was able to be um, developed, I guess. Um, you had help. Yeah, so you I had, had like a I team had behind you. Yeah, I had a lot of people telling me. When I say telling me, not telling me that like, you've got to do this, you've no. got to do that, but giving me their opinions yeah. and helping me and be like, actually, maybe do it like this or do it like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I will say though is having some time out and then coming back, I definitely was able to go, who is Dion Bronco? Who am I as yeah. an artist? Yeah, what yeah. do I want to do? Without the people whispering in your exactly. ear and you know, well, who am I actually? Yeah. And whether that's now or in the future, because everyone changes, yeah, exactly. but who am I right now? But it's nice to be able to be like, okay, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And this is, if you're on board, you're on board. If you're not on board, then so. I'll make it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so going back again, yeah right. Yeah. I remember hearing that in my mid twenties in Soho, some gay bar, and you know it was playing on the video jukebox. Right. And I remember thinking this is a tune, but I remember thinking it was like a grown woman. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think it was a teenage girl. I didn't think mm. it was a young singer. I thought it was an old school singer. I thought if anything it could be Duffy, it could be somebody mm. like that. And then my friend said, no, this is a young girl called Dion Bonfield. You know, you should really check her out. And I heard the album, Good for the Soul. I thought it was amazing, but I'm just interested to know where your influences come from because vocally you aren't. You know, and I mean this completely with compliments. It's refreshing to hear a voice like yours. There's, there's very few singers like you. You know, you've got Re Rebecca Ferguson, you've got, got a few yeah. people like that. So where, what was you listening to when you were um, a child? Like, what was on the record? I mean, I was completely in awe of my time. My mum used to have those work like right. all stacked away. And I think it must have been about, I think I was about 10 when I really like started finding out about, I actually quite music. I picked up a Marvin Gaye and Tim Thrill and I was able to mount it. Mum, what's this? And she was like, oh, it's like a vinyl, it's like a CD almost. Yeah. Mum was a bit like, how? Oh, how's that CD? You know, <laughs> so I, I had my, like, my Britney Spears on the CD still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Like, yeah. As well. yeah. So I think it was the whole thing, I can't believe there's like this huge thing and it comes up with this sound and then, but I think it was the whole experience of hearing a vinyl for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually had the same experience. Yeah. Enough. It's that, it's that, it's quite exciting as well because it it's is. not, it's not, Current, yeah. But then your parents kind of introduce you something. Exactly. Yeah, it's vintage, but it's interesting. Yeah. We got a computer and YouTube, and I remember, you know, just typing in Marvin Gaye, Thomas Rowe, Aiden Mountain, and then down the side, I got introduced to like Smith Robinson, The Temptations, Mary Wells, and I just not great music. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm all or nothing, and like once I really love something, I'm like on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So I yeah, yeah. Rinsed it. Like, when I mean rinsed it, like rinsed it. And then um, I started kind of getting introduced to like Lauryn Hill through um, Sister Act. Amazing, yeah, yeah, of course, right. yeah. So Sister yeah. too, great film. Yeah, um, an amazing album. Yeah. This education, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a brilliant great album. album. What I liked about Lauryn is how um, it was kind of a little, it's, it's hard, do you know what I mean? It's like in your face, she's telling you like, Completely. this is how yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, but yet, yeah, it's the sweetness of what she was saying and like the melodies in there and like the BBs and quite like group orientated and like, Rhythm chord, so it, it's very like soul, 
Yeah. Yeah, you have that hard hit on the punch. Yeah. Which kind of shows in Good For The Soul, I yeah. think, you know, I, so I, I can hear that when I hear yeah. a lot of the songs on that album. In terms of like your songs, because I mean, I love Good For The Soul, I thought it was a really great album, I thought introducing Dion Bournefield really did showcase your voice yeah. and showcase where and you... what it had to do. Yeah, exactly, and then you came back two years later with a batch of original songs, mm. which were fabulous. One of my favourite songs of yours, however, isn't actually an album track, oh, really? it's Black Butterfly. Oh, okay. Um, and I love how I think your voice on that song just it's stunning because it just matches the piano melody perfectly yeah. I think the two just become one almost yeah. how did that song come about and not just in terms of inspiration but how was it written where um, were you what studio I was in Los Angeles okay. for two weeks and um, it was like let's say it was Friday or whatever yeah. and um, I was meant to go home right. so I was on the I was packing my bag at my hotel ready to go to the airport the manager called me and said um Oh, we've just had a session come through with um, Sia and a bunch of Chris Bray. No, like, quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And at the time, I, okay. I didn't really know a lot about Sia's like stuff. Yeah, so. fair play. And Sia was like, "What do you want to write about?" And I was like, "I don't know." And I was like, "I've been here for two weeks. I don't really have anything." I said to her, "Well, look, when I was on the way to LA, I was I wrote down this stuff basically on the plane." I said, look, I've got this. I don't know what to do with it, but it's something. She was like, okay, cool. She sat with it for about 10 minutes. I think I must have gone to the toilet, come back. And she was like, right, I haven't changed the words. Like, all your words, but I've just formed it into a song. And she took all my words and just turned it into a song. So, yeah, just when you, when that, that process, just, yeah. it's funny, she's just taken your, your, your diary entry and just formed it into yeah. like a poem. It's funny how songwriters are just able to do yeah. that. So, and the thing yeah. is with Sia, Sia's very like, you know, you think you work with someone like Sia, you can be quite intimidated. You think, oh my god, she's got this hit that. She's really a huge name like, now. Exactly. Yeah. You, you're thinking, oh, how am I going to be able to like, anything yeah. that I'm going to give is going to be absolutely shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what you're thinking. It's like, oh, I'm just going to say, yeah, you're great, you're great. So that's actually an example of pressure, I guess, because yeah. you're like, yeah. And um, she's like, uh, along with Diane Warren, all these other yeah. songwriters, she's music royalty today. Absolutely. So when you're up against someone like that, it's actually nice to know that it was actually a good experience. Yeah. You know, because sometimes, you know, we've all heard horror stories about yeah, yeah. songwriting collaborations where it's got messy because yeah. there's too many egos in the room. So it's actually oh, yeah, quite no, nice no, no. that, that she is a down to earth, as you say. She was really lovely. I think you have to hold things on within like two hours and that. Some of the best songs are written effortlessly yeah. in, in the space of like five, ten minutes yeah. sometimes. Um, but it's a moment and it's captured. Yeah. Yeah, bad intentions. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, yeah. Do you like it? I think it's very good. Yes. I have to say. Glad. Yeah. Um, I'm in love with your body. I'm not in love with you. There you go. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, when I heard the song, I, it's about one night stands, right? Or yeah, is it, it was, is, what well, was inspired by it? What Did something specific happen yeah, to Yeah, um, I guess you, it can be your own interpretation. Okay. When I wrote it, it was about, I was in a, a situation with somebody. I right. really, really generally liked him. And I think, I would like to think he liked him too. But he just didn't like me as much as I liked him. And um, we kind of come to a conclusion of, it's not going to be what I wanted it to be, which was more. Um, so we kind of were like, okay, well, I didn't want to let go of him, so I kind of had that whole thing of like, okay, if I can still like be with him romantically and whatever in that kind of intimate yeah. way to keep the PG, yeah, yeah. then like that's me kind of still being with him. Mm -hmm. um, and that went on for a bit of time, and then it got to the point where I actually was like, Do you know, what? I don't actually like you, but I'm enjoying having fun with you, so like, if we can keep the emotions out of it. I think it's a mean? really relatable song because when I listen to it, I mean, like you say, everyone interprets you know songs yeah. differently. But when I heard this, I thought this is just 
in yeah, my life. That's, 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's life. <laughs> Anyone that's that too shallow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going back just for a second with Good for the Soul, when I heard that album, it was really uplifting, but there was like really unpredictable chord changes, so there yeah. was like a darkness to it at the same yeah. time, slightly uplifting of the production. Mm. So what are we to expect with, I mean, with this new song, it feels like as if it's more stripped back. Uh, what are we to expect now, music, um, from you, in comparison to all them years? I think um, Good for the Soul, that whole album was kind of me talking in the third person, I was kind of looking at other people's relationships. Right. Like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, taking some time out, but now I'm 24, I've experienced so a lot of stuff I've grown about. It's, it's about yeah, me. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. my experience. Yeah. So there are some like upbeat stuff in there. Um, I, I'm, I'm always into like soul music. So they're always very warm. Of course, yeah. Um, but there's a few on there that are, you know, I've got a song called City Love actually, and that's just about literally it all going on with love right. um, and that one what I'm saying is actually quite dark but I wanted to make sure the, the track itself was quite like um, what's the right word like warm and kind of like sparkly so contradicting what I'm I saying I was just about to say yeah, yeah I love them types of songs actually yeah. where the lyrics are saying one thing and the music saying another exactly yeah. because it's, it's so easy to do something that's really you know down tempo and really dark and really kind of gritty and which I love that stuff yeah. yeah but I just was like no you know the one thing about love is it, it, it can be a great thing, it can be a horrible thing, but yeah. you always start out with it being a great thing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. It yeah. just sometimes doesn't end great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Unless no. you're the one to get rid of them, <laughs> then it might be great. If you're on the receiving yeah. end, it's not great. It's not as great. Yeah. Just say the words of my name. Going back to Bad Intentions, that's out now. Yep. And what are we to expect from you this year? Is there a tour? Is there new music coming out um, after Bad Intentions? There'll be more music, yeah. Real? We've got two more singles to follow, then, yeah. But um, are you excited about this year? I'm really excited, yeah. yeah. I, I feel more sure about myself than ever. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's brilliant. Put it there. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's lovely to meet you. Come here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.